So um, thank you, Joe, for joining us on Goldbus TV today. And today is actually Technology Tuesday, hashtag Transformation Tuesday. So I feel like it's such a nice gel because we are talking about how to use technology to further um, a career and how to, you know, transform in terms of how work has changed um, at this time. And I think it's, it's a very critical time to be having this conversation during this lockdown in South Africa. So without any further ado, um, instead of asking you, trying to explain what you do, I'm going to let you do that. So could you please tell us what you do, Joe? And I know you do stuff around remote working. If you can explain in detail what remote working is. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's, yeah, really, it's really, really good, really to, be good here, to be here. Actually, here, actually. But, um, um, sorry, I'm getting sorry, a bit I'm of feedback. I'm feedback. hearing myself. I'm hearing myself. No, I know, but it's, it's um, clear on my side. Okay, cool. I'll yeah. stop. Sorry. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll mute my own. There we go. That should help. Okay. okay. Great. So thank you very much for having me. It's uh, it's super exciting to chat to you today. And uh, as you say, a very relevant topic for where we're at at the moment. Uh, so I um, my name is Joe, and I'm the founder of a company called Coquelo, um, which helps professionals to transition from their current current careers to remote ones. And uh, and also helps to uh, support managers in becoming very good remote leaders as well. Uh, so my um, I spend a lot of my time working with uh, managers of uh, companies that have teams in distributed areas with remote workers around the world. Uh, and I'm also a remote myself. I'm a remote worker for um, uh, for Epic Games, where I do their, their global marketing for one of their product sets. Uh, so I have about uh, about 13 years uh, experience of, of remote work in total. I've been lucky enough to travel the world, uh, advised multinationals on uh, on their communications and their marketing, and later on their on on, on their leadership strategies, uh, and uh, and it's just been it's been a really fantastic experience, um, and I've learned a huge amount from from speaking to these people, and learned a lot myself from from having to lead remotely and build teams from uh, based around the world, uh, because it's very different to when you're right next to someone and you can speak to them face to face it's quite a different experience when you uh you have a virtual team so most of my career i have worked re remotely and uh why am i such a such a fan of it well it's from a personal standpoint remote working it really offers that incredible freedom um and that's a value that i personally hold very very dearly and traditionally that freedom to me meant the ability to travel wanted and life now that freedom for me is that flexibility that I get to uh, to spend with my family and uh, and with my, my little daughter and and from the point of view of, of businesses being able to hire remote talent really means that you aren't restricted by location so there's a whole world of talent out there and while your company may be based in the USA or Russia or China or South Africa For that role in your in your business may not be in the same country as you and remote working offers that wow um i don't think i've oh, i've actually as, as, a, as a business leader myself i've only worked with um remote teams only when i'm like um outsourcing design work and stuff like that yep. what kind of other talent what kind of talent pool or skills can you get in terms of <laughs> remote working? you said you run a whole marketing division remotely mm. How does that work? Well, that, that's that's it. I think, you know, traditionally, um, a lot of remote job postings and, and remote work was uh, more for kind of computer programmers and developers. And that's certainly where the remote work, um, I suppose, started uh, some time back. But this really isn't the case anymore. Um, so these days, there are really very few office based positions that you can't do remotely. We have high speed Internet you, most of the time. <laughs> and um and we have good technology. We've got laptops. We've got headphones. And you know, take take the role that I'm currently doing. I lead a marketing team over um, four different continents, six different time zones, um, and 
there's there's absolutely there's some challenges there but it really meant means that for that particular team i could pick the best people in the world to do that that role um so the challenges with time zones for example you just have to be very clear um about which hours that you are willing to work and which hours you're not um and i i i'm very clear to make sure that the team that i work with tell me what is it is and isn't acceptable for them because i don't want to be asking them to join a conference call at uh, you know eight eight o'clock at night when they're perhaps putting their kids to bed uh, so we we make it work and um uh, with those kind of, of things it's quite important to know the difference between synchronous and asynchronous communications channels and tools that we use so um so for example a, a, a synchronous channel might be something like email which is just um, you know, you can send one out and you don't expect to get that in instant feedback. And then the asynchronous, you've got the um, things like um, uh, phone calls, video calls, where you get a bit more of that instant feedback and and uh, and body language that's quite important to see when you're uh, when you're trying to to get a specific point across or you're trying to feel the room for for how they feel about what you're talking about. Um, so there's challenges involved, but it's uh, it's really it's there is no there is no one specific skill set that that is out there yeah. that, that's needed for remote work. Yeah. Okay. But you said something that was that was that prompts my next question, which is around the whole feeling of people. You know, getting a feel of how they work, of of what makes them click. So, like when you're putting a team together. So, if I want to apply for a remote job, how do I? What do I have to do? Do I have to do a CV? Do I have to do an audio, visual CV? How do I get myself out there in a way that makes people want to have me as mm. part of it, even though they've never met me? Yeah, no, it's it's all very good questions because the the difference between, uh, I suppose, a traditional way of, of applying for a job and um, uh, applying for a remote role uh, is that you need to be able to uh, communicate your passion and and your commitment for what you do both uh, both in your particular skill set but also what the company does um, and there's lots of different ways you can do that but coming back to the idea of of knowing your passion um, this is what I tell a lot of people is that the basics for remote work it's really about mindset so you need to have a demonstrable passion for what you do and that means you need to be able to prove that so you can't, you know, I, I might be passionate about writing, but if I don't have an online portfolio that shows all of my writing experience, that's just a, a simple example. Um, so if you, if you, for example, start to, to search for remote work without really being clear on what problem you're solving with your skills, then you're not going to get very far. Um, secondly, you need to be able to communicate that you're incredibly self-motivated. Uh, remote workers generally tend to have quite an entrepreneurial mindset and there's nobody looking over your shoulder. You have to get yourself up in the morning. So having that self-motivation and that's why being passionate about what you do is so important. It's, it's key. And then, uh, you know, thirdly, really you have to be an exceptional communicator. So your verbal, your written communication needs to be really on point and uh, and be proactive with your communication as well. And that kind of thing will come through in the hiring process. So if you're uh, perhaps, you know, you, you find a, a company that you're, you really love and you know that they have in the past hired remotely, that's a, that's a good, good first, uh, you know, good starting point. When you apply for a role, uh, you may or may not know whether that is a remote role or not. So you can motivate at that standpoint and say, look, I I um, uh, really am passionate about this particular job and this is why, and this is why I think working remotely will really benefit you. So you need to be able to communicate what problem you are solving with that before you even take on the, um, uh, the remote side of things. Yeah. And then earlier when you were introducing yourself, you said that you help professionals transition into remote work. Um, what about people, you know, young women or young men coming mm -hmm. out of university? What, mm -hmm. What's your advice around remote working and how can they go around getting remote work? So there's, um, it's quite a, a, an important thing that you're kind of touching on slightly there. Um, 
and freelance work. So, so just to get the differentiation there, because there's a slightly different way of approaching the two. So remote work generally tends to be when you have, um, when you're employed by an organization or you have a long-term contract with an organization, let's say. Um, so for example, with the, a lot of the work that I do with Epic Games, whilst I'm a contractor, I spend the vast majority of my time working with them and their teams. Um, and I'm, I'm treated in many regards as an employee. Uh, the difference being that I am in a satellite office. My satellite office is my home and uh, certainly is at the moment anyway. Can't even go to a cafe <laughs> to, to work <laughs> today. Um, but uh, but yeah, so, so, so that would be the remote side. Freelancing tends to be a little bit more, um, you have more than one client a lot of the time, you may have um, ups and downs in, in, the, in, in, in the amount of money you're bringing in. And so personally, the, the remote, for, remote side for me gives me that, um, that flexibility while still knowing I'm getting that paycheck every month. So it, right. it, it, you, have, you have that stability. So coming back to your question about young people um, coming out of, of, of university and, and you know, not, not entirely sure which way to go, you know, I would say the first thing they need to look at is to g- take a deep dive into, first of all, where, where their motivations lie. Why do they want to remote work? So are they looking to do it because they want to travel? Are they doing it because um, they, they want to start a family? You know, the, it's quite important to know that because that will come up in interview. Um, not directly. You won't be directly asked, why do you want to work remotely? It's very unusual. Uh, but it, um, if, if your motivation to work remotely is just because you want to um, work in bed and put your feet up in, in lunchtime, that, you know, that's going to come across. So you just need to know why you want to do it. Uh, secondly, if um, uh, in terms of, of how you'd start approaching looking for these kind of roles. So it really depends where your skill set lies. I mean, there are a whole bunch of different websites um, that you can look at. Uh, the top ones in my from the top of my head are things like Working Nomads, um, Remoters, uh, Flex Jobs is good. They've got also you work remotely, no desk. Uh, one I've also seen some really interesting uh, jobs on is AngelList, uh, specifically for startups. So AngelList uh, is generally for, for startups across the world, but you can look at it uh, from different regions as well. And uh, there's some quite interesting um, both entry all the way up to senior level positions there uh, if you're less interested in the corporate and more interested in the in the startup world. Corporations these days do have um, flexible working options. So if you are the kind of person that might actually enjoy working from an office sometimes, um, but want that flexibility to work from home occasionally as well, a lot of businesses are doing that. Um, Dell, for example, has done that for years. Um, there's, there's, uh, I know Discovery has certain certain schemes as well, and there's uh, there's certainly an ability for you to bring that up and people shouldn't be afraid to be bringing flexible working up especially not in this day and age uh and again if you're the kind of if you're an extrovert and you're not getting a huge amount of social time at home then maybe working in an office is still good sometimes for you so know yourself well and know your skill set well and that's a good place to start yeah and how are you what is the appetite i mean you've mentioned um companies like dow discovery how many people from South Africa or Africa are able to get work globally? Do you have any ideas in terms of statistics? Um, I don't in terms of statistics. I, I can only speak anecdotally and, and from, from the people I've spoken to. I mean, I would say that a lot of the time people don't think that it's an option. Um, and it's definitely not as big as it could be here. I mean, Africa is home to some absolutely incredible talent. Uh, and we are, I believe, now entering a period of history where location matters less and less. So Africa has the benefit as well of being on the similar time zone to Europe. So I would always encourage professionals across the continent to think big. Uh, Don't just think that you can only apply for a job in South Africa or Africa. Um, There are opportunities around the world. And if you have the right skill set and you're able to communicate that well, then then you could find yourself um, in a really nice position with the opportunity to potentially earn foreign currency as well, which is 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 often a good a good option. 
Yeah. Speaking of money, um, how how good is usually the the pay for remote if you're working remotely? Um, it should be as good as if you're in the office, if not better. I mean, the 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 nice thing for businesses is that they're essentially saving on overheads by offering remote work. It's cheaper for them as a business to offer um, remote versus an, uh, an office-based role nine times out of ten, which means that they then have the ability to spend that extra money that they're saving in getting that right person for the role. So um, again, sky's the limit in terms of salary. There's no significant difference from my experience um, in what you get paid in an office versus what you get paid remotely. Yeah, and so how often do you get to travel? Because that's a, a, a major Yeah. Less than I used to now, but well, that's mainly out of my own personal choice. I um, before before coronavirus hit, I would be in the states um, every couple of months, in Europe every couple of months, Nigeria or Ghana um, quite regularly as well. But that's because I just like going there and uh, and I enjoy those places. Um, but yeah, I've got a young daughter now, so I try I try and travel less. Otherwise, my husband might uh, might divorce me. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's uh, travel is still very close to my heart. I think that it's um, it's a great education in and of itself. Yeah, and just if I know you said that there aren't there isn't a specific skill set that's in high demand, but what would you say are the top five in terms of availability that you've seen? Um, out in the global market? Look, I think um, uh, development, web designers, um, coders are still very, very under, very high in demand. And that's never going to change, well, certainly not in the near future. Um, so if you've got those kind of skills, um, and that's why I'm hugely supportive of any uh, educational programs that do help people learn to code, because it's tough. Um, that would certainly still be up there. Um, general copywriting skills uh, is, is is always needed because there you can generally you can use that kind of copywriting ability to do the journalistic element, um, but you could also do it as a PR type thing or even social media copywriting. So there's a lot of different areas you can work in as a copywriter. Uh, social media and community management is is big. Um, I'm most of the community and social media managers I've hired in the past have been remote workers. And um, the nice thing about that is that you can get someone that's very knowledgeable about a specific region or a specific type of community um, or a specific location. Um, I would say that other general skills, things like translation, transcription. So if, you, if you're a fast typer, like most of us are these days, you can often get um, get get good roles there. And another big one that's growing and growing is um, uh, virtual assistants. So you know, the virtual assistants may offer many of the things I just discussed, but also simple things like um, managing your your diary, doing your travel bookings. And the nice thing about that is you can earn quite well doing that without having um, a bunch of degrees under your belt or anything. You know. It, it just requires you to have a good internet connection somewhere quiet to work and uh, and a good head on your shoulders right and do you find that is there you in, in in remote work in terms of um gender is it as easy for women to get remote work especially managerial type of remote work as it is for men look i mean i think uh, I, I would say that there's probably very little difference um, in regards to the challenges women uh, face in, in the workplace, whether it's remote or not. The only thing I would say is that um, the people that are t um, or the organizations that tending to hire more remotely are more tech. Um, I am generalizing here, but from I, th I think that the, the tech companies really started the revolution and so there still tend to be those those remote um um that, that hire remotely often and because of that and because tech tends to be more male dominated um there may be sometimes issues whereby uh the the um it's harder for women to to crack that to crack that nut but the one thing i've always been um uh, really passionate about and and uh, I remind people of a lot is that if you look at um, diversity and we, we're all talking about 
the imp needing to improve diversity in the workplace. There's been research that shows that boards that are comprised of, of both genders perform about 15% better, but boards composed of different cultures as well as different genders, um, they, they perform up to 35% better. So having both genders and lots of lots of cultures and diversity on your board it means that your your company is is far far more likely to be more innovative um to generally see better growth patterns and so i think that we can learn a lot from that when we're looking at hiring remotely yeah um you you it's got i don't think it's really got to do with remote working per se but it's something that i'm curious about um since i have you on the line and you mentioned um, board members, um, is there an opportunity for a company, like I say, a company in South Africa to get a remote board member, let's say in Europe? Um, have you seen such um, instances? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good um, good question, and I think uh, it's it's definitely something pe uh, people should be looking into. Uh, angel lists that I mentioned earlier do that very well. Um, there's a lot of uh, remote board members wanted because they're looking for that diversity of of experience and skills. Yeah. Okay. And then um, perhaps as we wind down, you can um, you know share with us your experiences. Let's say an experience around culture clashes. Like I think mm -hmm. one of the one of the biggest issues around global teams is <laughs> cultures. Um, what experience have you had there, and how do you deal with that? And are the courses that you should take to be able to learn to deal with, with cultures? Sorry, I missed the last part of your question there. Could you just no, repeat that last bit for me? Oh, if there's, is there a course, an online program that a person could read through? Let's say I've never, I've only ever worked in South Africa with South African culture. Yeah. And now I'm going to work with a Chinese, Indian, American, yeah. European. Is there something that I can, a crash course I can do quickly in terms of how to work in a, in a multicultural mm. That's part of the fun being in a, in a global global team, especially when you work remotely, uh, is really, really learning about these different cultures. And, you know, I've um, I've had experiences whereby we've had, um, uh, for example, American team working with um, a Nigerian team and a Pakistani team. And the the cultures in those three different regions are, are super different. And um, I find myself, because I know the three cultures relatively well, having worked with them before, I kind of end up being a bit of a mediator. But the the American um, uh, the, the Americans have a tendency of being fairly direct in their in their communication, um, which can work fairly well with Nigerians who also tend to be fairly direct. The only challenge is that the type of directness that they offer is quite different. So you'll have um, <laughs> you'll have a, a, a Nigerian say, for example, OK, whatever. And to them, that's perfectly fine. Like they're just say, they're not being rude. They're saying, OK, whatever. That's great. Like and yeah. the, the American chief's like this person's saying, OK, whatever to me. And then yeah. you've got a Pakistani person who's just completely offended. And <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the one thing I always say is this is written communication, right? So this is the problem with remote teams. We spend a lot of time on Slack and WhatsApp and Skype. And um, it's much it's much uh, you're much less likely to, to miss this nuance and intent intended communication if you get onto your video call instead. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so so th there's a lot of that. And in terms of um, educating yourself, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, th there's definitely um, there's Udemy courses on this that I've taken. And uh, no, it, it's the best thing you can do though, beyond taking crash courses in different cultures and different ways of working, is just talk to your team. Be be naturally curious and empathetic, and also assume the best in people. Um, nine times out of ten, people aren't meaning to be rude. Um, and uh, it's it's really about asking questions, being being naturally curious, and just saying, "So, tell me more about how you grew up, and and uh, and and how you work." And and it's wonderful. It's really really nice to learn about other people's cultures.